Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced, Developer Advocate at Dremio. And what I want to do today is show you here on Dremio Cloud how to, how what reflections are and how do they work and how do they benefit you. Okay, so I'm going to say here I have this sales data, okay, the sales table. Like if I click on it, it's going to take me to me, take you to the SQL runner where I can run SQL. Now to get to all the really fun stuff, what I can do is I can click over here on this edit button. Okay, that's going to take me to this screen where I can, you know, also run SQL, but I also have access to this details panel, which gives me access to the wiki, the lineage panel, where I can see sort of like the lineage of this data set, and the reflections panel. Now, reflections is really a big part of the secret sauce of Dremio. Okay, now to understand, to really appreciate what reflections brings to the table, let's understand what most other engines provide as solutions, something called materialized tables. Okay, now what a materialized table does, so let's say I have a view on a data, so I have a I have a one petabyte table, let's say, right? And there's just one gigabyte subset that I run analytics on all the time. Maybe it's a month's worth of data or a week's worth of data. So what I'll do is I'll run a query on that subset, let's say the last month's worth of data, and what I'll do is I'll create a view. And now a view is a logical filter. So essentially every time I look at that view, it's still running a query on the petabyte of data. But really, why do I want to run that query in the full set of data when I always just need that one gigabyte data? So you create what's called a materialized table, which creates a physical copy of the gigabyte. So that way, whenever I query the materialized table, I'm only scanning that gigabyte of data. It doesn't have to go through that intermediate step of doing the query on the petabyte to get to the gigabyte and then my actual query. Okay. The pro there's three potential problems, though, with this typical and standard and traditional approach. Okay, one, you generally have to do it under a different namespace. So if, I, if this is table A, okay, and I create a materialized view based on table A, that that materialized view may have a name of t t table A2 or table A materialized. Okay, the problem is now my end users to get the benefit of the materialization have to know to query that namespace. So if I query table A, I'm scanning the full petabyte of data. If I scan table A or, you know, table A, view one, materialized, then I'm going to get the benefit of the materialization. Okay, so, you know, the more namespaces you have to juggle, the more likeliness you're going to have mistakes. Okay. Two, okay, um, you have to keep it in sync. So oftentimes you have to kind of make all these sort of different decisions on how that's going to happen. Are you going to regularly just rebuild the entire materialization? Are you going to maintain a change data log? So that way you can use CDC patterns to help more incrementally refresh that uh, materialization. Like, how are you going to do it? How often are you going to do it? There's all just so many different decisions to make. Okay? But it doesn't automatically happen most of the time. Okay? So that's another thing you have to kind of figure out. And three, you have to create a materialization for every view you want to accelerate. So if I have five views in the same table, and I want to accelerate all five views, I'm creating five materialized views, five copies of that same data. Okay? So you're not getting the best bang out of your buck. You're accelerating, but, you know, you, you are it gets expensive after you once you create enough of these reflections solves all three of these issues and really has a whole bunch more implications at hand okay uh, so one when i create a reflection like materialized views it is creating a physical um a physical representation that's going to help accelerate the data but it's going to be optimized and we'll talk about that optimization in a moment um so that case it'll accelerate the queries that way. But I don't need to use a different namespace. So if I query table A and reflections are turned on on table A, if a reflection exists that would accelerate my particular query, it will use it. I don't have to go query different namespaces, table A2, table A3, table A4. I just query table A. And if Dremio can accelerate my query based on whatever has already been existed, I don't even have to be aware that's existed. Um, it will just accelerate. Two, okay. Um, so you have to use a different namespace. Uh, two, it keeps it in sync. So Dremio is automatically going to sync that to the original, like those those physical representations. Um, you can either do a manual refresh, or they can happen on a schedule. So, so it'll just handle that. And three, um, if you can one, you can create multiple representations on the same table. And we'll talk about that, the benefits of doing that in a second. But let's say I create multiple views on the same table. The reflections that are created on the original table will also accelerate all the views without having to make for me to make other materialized views or reflections on those tables. Okay, so essentially any query related to that table 
in which a reflection can help accelerate that particular query will benefit it, even on joins, on basically any place where reflection can substitute a query on table A, a reflection will be used. Um, Dremio just figures that out, okay? Um, you know, using, you know, very, very smart logic. <laughs> um, okay, so so basically it solves all those three things. So one, you're going to get much more bang out of each reflection. So instead of having to create separate materializations for every possible view in every possible situation, you know, a handful of reflections can be used in many use cases, minimizing the amount you have to store. So it's saving you costs on your acceleration as far as physical storage. It's accelerating your query, so it's saving you on compute costs. Okay, and when you combine reflections with Dremio C3 cache, that is helping like cache uh, data to reduce the amount of calls to your like uh, your S3 or your ADLS. You're also saving money on access costs. Okay, so you're saving money in all three buckets to really reduce your cost and speed up performance. But again, there's two types of reflections, okay? There's reflections that are physical, the raw reflections, which are really like a copy of the entire view or table, okay? And those are gonna be for, you know, speeding up queries on a, on a view of a table. We'll talk about use cases. Uh, and then there's aggregation reflections, which creates a physical copy of aggregate results, which is really useful for speeding up BI dashboards, okay? So I can turn on aggregate reflections, and then when I run like Tableau, or, or Power BI, or Mode, or any of these power, uh, or, or, or Superset, any of these types of BI solutions on that data, they're going to be sub-second queries. I don't have to create any kind of cubes or extracts. It's just, I'm just running it straight on the table, and it's going to be super, super fast because you have these physical copies of the summary results, making a lot of those switching, uh, you know, making that interactive BI dashboard really, really nice, crisp, and fast. Okay. Um, so those are the aggregation reflections. But now with the raw reflections, what's really neat is that, I'll, again, you don't have to create a different namespace, but now I could, I could just turn on and create that copy of that subset view, and that's going to ex certainly accelerate a query, but I can go even further, okay? If I click here on the advanced tab, I can fine tune how that reflection gets created. I can change the way the data is sorted in the specific reflection to lean into my query patterns or how it is partitioned. So for example, if I have data that's originally sorted by date, okay? But I know there's a subset of queries that are coming in, uh, querying by, let's say, you know, if it's, we'll say if it's voter data, we'll say by, by political party, okay, I can create a reflection that's partitioned by political party, okay, for the queries that focus on that. Or I can, and then maybe have it, or diff, uh, I can create another reflection, so you can have multiple reflections, so I can click here, create new reflection, and then I can have, so I can have this one sort partitioned by one field, and then this second reflection partitioned by a different field. And then when different queries come into table A, and again, every end user doesn't need to know about all these reflections, so they don't have to query different namespaces, they just query the table, okay? Their, their query will be accelerated by the reflection that makes the most sense based on their query pattern, okay? And uh, so, so basically, it just takes a lot of the engineering, uh, simplifies a lot of it, and makes it a lot more uh, simple for the end user, because they're not thinking about, okay, hey, there's like the, these 20 different views, with these. 20 different materialized views on those views and I have to remember the names of each one and when to use each one. I just query the table and if there's reflections created that will accelerate my particular query, it will be accelerated. And it's simple as that, okay? So for the end user, it really simplifies the whole process, gets rid of a lot of the things that make materialized views sometimes a little cumbersome for the end user, having to think about different namespaces, whether it's, whether it's, 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 but, you know, worrying about whether it's stale and uh, you know, and also some of the cost issues of having to maintain too much physical storage because you're creating a, a separate copy for every individual view. Reflections, um, you know, smartly uh, executed reflections can accelerate many different query patterns and really reduce the amount of storage costs you have to for, those, for that acceleration. So uh, if you're not trying out Dremio and you're not trying out reflections, you're really missing out. My name is Alex Merced, developer advocate here at Dremio. Have a great day and enjoy.